Hi everyone, I hope you're well. So our next video is a fun subject and quite a popular one and it is to go on this decanter which is a wine decanter. This is a commission. Um, there is not a very large budget so um, I'm keeping the whole design just to the front otherwise I would be putting it all the way round. So what is the design? Well, the story is this customer's son was born in the year 2000 and in Chinese years that is the year of the dragon. So she would like a golden dragon on this decanter. You will see that it hasn't got the stop in it. I have taken the stopper out and will be putting a tape over the top so that the dust doesn't get inside. It is not lead crystal. It is modern glass. So it is, um, it's actually not bad. It's not a bad quality. It's nice and heavy. It's nice and thick. And um, it should be really good fun um, to engrave. So now the image, I have um, taken a couple of designs, copyright free designs from the internet and used the body of one and the head of another and I've put this head which I prefer onto this body for the basic layout, the basic shape of this creature. Um, I'm not a dragon expert but I do know that um, for the Chinese dragon they should have rough, normally about four uh, claws. Um, five claws I believe is more for royalty but um, the four claws uh, is quite normal. Three claws is generally a Japanese dragon. So this one has got four claws and it's also holding, where are we, um, a, a pearl which is part of the story somewhere along the line and uh, yeah I know he's quite dramatic I love the I love the the face uh, you can have such fun with this and uh, <laughs> I wish I was doing it all over the the decanter but as I say um, the budget will not allow that these uh, details here I'm not necessarily going to keep exactly to obviously what's on here free to, to do whatever blows your hair back really. Um, the, this uh, tummy area is quite good, it's showing where the tummy goes and it's twisting up and it's twisting around back underneath there, underneath the back legs there, coming up to a nice fiery tail. Usually there's some flames coming up from the pearl but it hasn't on this one. Um, I may add some, I will see. But otherwise, that is some artwork. I will be transferring this onto the decanter uh, very simply. Well, there's two, two ways really, three if you want to freehand draw it on, go for it. Um, but I will uh, be somehow transferring it with uh, either a carbon using um, the old black pencil carbon that you used to put in typewriters, that's usually quite good. And also the other version, um, which is quite easy, I might actually do that. White pencil, colour in the back of it, and uh, in which case this is the, the smaller one that's going to fit the uh, decanter. And then you place it on the decanter and just trace off the very basic details, the positioning of everything. And then after that, it's a case of get on and colour it in and do what you like and that should be really good fun. It's quite thick so I can I can get stuck in there. Uh, <laughs> yay! <laughs> no flowers this time and um, yeah so let's get on with it. I don't think I've got anything else to tell you. Have fun! Well let's start as usual with a little white Arkansas burr. Now 
As you can see, I have traced it on. What I have used in the end was the black carbon. Uh, it was the most successful. I did try my other tracing uh, techniques, but they didn't want to come out on this glass. Some, some glassware has a slight film of something over the top that means they need to be washed. Um, anyway, so I wiped that off. It was a bit of a mess and I gave it a good clean and then in fact used my black carbon. Just shoved it underneath the artwork and traced the basic details. Bits that didn't um, come out properly um, that I could just about see, I just scribbled it on um, with some with a uh, green pen as you can see near the top so i'm just very roughly as always going over uh, what i have drawn it doesn't need to stick exactly to what i've drawn quite often i will change little bits and pieces as i go along but basically you got the idea. This little burr does not need to go very fast. It's probably only going at about 20,000 RPM and I'm not pressing very hard either. I have sped up this part of the film to 130% of normal speed. As you can see, I have got the white material behind the glass and that is so that I can see the black carbon. Had I traced it on using the white pencil uh, scribbled on the paper then I would have kept the background black but obviously with a, a black carbon I do need a light background. It is very faint anyway. I also started at the bottom right hand corner of the image and there's a very good reason for that and that is because as my hand moves across the artwork whatever it touches it will smudge uh, and come off and so therefore starting at the bottom you're not going to smudge it. You will notice I missed a bit. I missed my little bit of green. So, <laughs> which I only noticed when I pulled the white away. So um, I don't know why I did that. Anyway, quickly scribbling over the green area. There we are. Got the water dripping. And starting with a small-ish diamond burr. It's not brand new, but it's in pretty good condition. Starting around the eye and head area, uh, which I normally like to start. In fact, it's quite interesting because this one, I didn't complete the eyes first. And as you know, normally I would complete the eyes so that they look at me all the time while I'm finishing the rest of the engraving. But it was really odd because I got to near the end and realized of course that I still had to do the eye that was showing, the one eye. And I thought how very odd. Maybe somewhere <laughs> in my back of my mind I didn't want a dragon staring at me all the, all the way through. <laughs> Oh dear, but anyway, it doesn't matter when you do the eye, but in this case, I only uh, did the actual eyeball at the end. So I'm going quite deeply. I know 
it's hard to tell, but lots of water and pressing relatively hard. I always say as though you're using an, a very bad, cheap ballpoint pen. This glass, it turns out, is actually really quite soft. I often find when glass is thick, it is soft. Don't ask me why. There must be someone out there who can tell me. Uh, but this is really lovely to work into. Now, there are many engravers um, who would only ever do the technique where you, you grind out the whole shape of the head and then go deeper in for all the different uh, perspectives, all the different features going deeper and deeper for the features that are sticking out or the ones that are closer to you. But I, it's a funny thing, I very rarely do that. I like to pick out the features and go really deeply and and then just work it around that. So you're still getting a sort of a texture and a depth that has been picked up by the light. But we haven't started by gouging out the whole background first. Um, and in actual fact, especially for my work and these sort of commissions, people don't have um, well, not that they don't have the, the kind of money that you need for that sort of job, but they don't want to spend that much money. Uh, they normally, um, it's just a gift for someone. This is just a 21st birthday present. Um, so if I was to do this decanter in with the other technique, a real intaglio engraving, it really would take me a long time and it would cost the customer a lot more. I find this equally as effective to do. Turning the glass around, of course, so that especially for this, these, these sort of antlers or whatever you want to call them that are on top of his head. I'm starting at the point and very carefully pulling towards me. This means that I am getting a far more efficient flow and it's not likely to wobble about. Had I been trying to do that sideways, then it's very difficult to get it nicely um, flowing. Also, I'm, as usual, at a funny angle because I'm trying to to get this decanter facing the camera and not me. So I'm always slightly twisted and not quite looking down directly on the top of it. And I'm not, I'm trying not to get my head in front of the camera, usual story. Yeah, I'm very pleased with the softness of this glass. Now you can use a slightly thicker burr for the thicker parts of these. I'm just going to call them antlers because I don't know what you call them. Um, and I'm, I've just decided to use this thinner burr, but I don't want to have streaks. I want it to be nice and smooth. So I am actually working it so that it is uh, deeper in the middle, but it doesn't have streaks. You can't see that I have used a smaller burr. Otherwise, you could use, as I say, the bigger burr, starting in the bigger area and then working outwards and then finishing the point with a smaller burr. There 
you can see all the textures. You can see the light picking up, um, especially when it's wet, it, it actually picks it up nicely, the depth. Now I'm sort of adding these sort of flame type shapes, uh, whether it's flames or hair, flame shaped hair, I'm not really sure. Uh, doesn't matter, they are very effective. They give the impression of, of them flowing along. Looking very dramatic. I'm using a lot of water. Um, the tray gets filled up with water, obviously. Um, and the other morning I came in and, and a poor little spider had fallen in and not, was not able to get out and had drowned. And I, I felt really sad about that. I don't like to think that a little creature has, has struggled um, and died. It's, it's horrible. But anyway, I thought that that is something that we could do as a subject, actually. Um, a really realistic spider. No, I'm not normally a fan. Uh, and they just freak me out a little bit if they give me a fright. <laughs> but um, I do appreciate that they are wonderful creatures. Right, I've got quite a big burr here. And I'm doing the outline quite thick. And then I will be blending in from there so that you can't see that it's a line. It might look a little bit rough for the moment, but of course, much later on, this will be blended rather better. Rather better? Is that good grammar? <laughs> Probably not. Anyway, here we are starting on these, these funny things on the belly. I am not worrying too much about each one being perfectly identical. Uh, I am doing this at quite a speed, really. Mainly because of my schedule is pretty packed at the moment and I need to get a lot done. So for the claws, I'm initially giving it a lot of sort of lumpy texture. And here you can see I am creating the pearl, slowly going round, starting in the middle, working outwards, and then working back into the middle and making sure there that I just stay in the middle just a little while and then work outwards again. And then work inwards again and stop in the middle for a little bit so that you you don't end up with a donut you're trying to make a nice smooth rounded sphere don't worry i will be adding some more claws there on the other side one of the legs engraving with a sort of a rounded round and round sort of motion I'm trying to create a an illusion of 
roundness of the limb and a bit of sort of muscliness. That's a word. And if it's not, it is now. These really do work to show the twisting of the body. The other leg, as you can see, giving it a lumpiness. We will neaten up the claws later, but initially it's just... <laughs> they do, it looks a bit like Michelin Man's claws, but I'll get them sorted out later. This is the end of the tail. Again, tr keeping it um, deeper in the middle, and it really does give it that rounded effect. But it's still to be neatened, of course, and blended so that you don't see any. The, in fact, you, the only texture that I'm wanting you to see are, uh, or will be the movement of the burr in that sort of rounded fashion you will see it later on um, you can start to see it there maybe you can see how I am creating this texture ever so slightly um, giving the impression that it's rounded, basically. It is rounded anyway. It needs to be, be neatly blended from the smooth side so that you can't see the line. And whatever I don't manage to blend now, I will blend at a later stage. I don't want to, it to look as though it's got a flat edge. This area, of course, can be done with a much larger burr um, and sort of pulled away from the edge. And that, that, that can be a really nice effect. Um, I just couldn't be bothered to keep changing. <laughs> so I stuck with this burr. It was working really nicely. And I liked the lines because um, it's almost like it's got a little rough um, bit of diamond dust on the coating that is just catching and creating a few extra white ridges and that for me was fine because I've already decided that I like 
this basic, basic texture. And I'm not going to do scales um, on this dragon. And so out with the smaller diamond again. And now we're just going to uh, add a little bit more detail to the big rough and ready areas that I've used the big diamond for. Adding in uh, the extra little claws that are peeping around the edges. And I'm going to add the flame effect to the ends, to the end of this tail. We will, of course, be adding the very sharp claws right at the end. a funny little flame a little flame coming from the back of uh, the um, the back end of his elbow or knee or whatever that is probably a knee um, I don't know <laughs> whether it's supposed to be a flame or uh, hair uh, same thing it's a dragon I have engraved many dragons in the past. Um, I love the Chinese ones because they they just seem to have so much character. You can see them um, in, in, in my mind. I can see them in, in a parade, if you like, with all the color and the noise. And, and I think in general, they are good dragons. Whereas if you are engraving a European dragon, they, I think, are rather nasty characters. So you can see this dragon is looking pretty neat. I am liking it and I'm having a lot of fun. So till the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.